Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Sherry Calvum. She's also known as the Juice Lady. She's been on the show before, so please welcome her back. It's nice to see you again. How are you? Well, I'm in hot Arizona, but I'm staying cool. Thank God for air, air conditioning. <laughs> Isn't Arizona like the hottest state in the country right now or just in general? Oh, in general. And right now we're breaking all records. I think we're on to our 25th day of above 110. And it's getting to all of us, let me tell you. I'll tell you, I, I've never lived in Arizona, but I've lived in the desert in Indio near Palm Springs. And I remember 122. So I feel for you. How, how long have you lived there, Sherry? Almost five years. Where did you come from before? The Northwest, the uh, rainy but beautiful Northwest. But we got tired of the cloudy days. And we were just ready for some sun. Most of the year, we absolutely adore living here. Uh, there's two or three months where it's really hot. And uh, we're trading that for cloudy nine months, you know. Yeah, that's why so many people, I guess, are snowbirds. They live half time one place, half time the other place. Do you juice every day? Do you juice all year round? I juice. I juice every day that I'm home. When I travel, I usually can't get juice. But yes, every day when I'm home and it makes such a difference. In fact, that's most mornings, that's my breakfast. I, I have a juice and then I have a smoothie, which is juice plus an avocado. And I'm going to do a version of that in a little bit for your audience. But it's a great energizing way to start your day. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't juice juice. I, I I have a champion juicer, but I don't think it's the most user friendly. I'm curious to learn more about the juicer that you're using, because I know that's the one that Chris Wark and many other people recommend. Yes. Yes. And I've been recommending it since I discovered it. I absolutely love it. And you're going to see why because uh, I'm about to show you put all your produce in this upper chamber right here, turn it on walk away and do some prep for more food or clean your kitchen, whatever you want, but you don't have to stand there and go like this, which is so amazing. Yeah. You don't have to babysit it. No, or stuff things in it constantly. You know, I was always feeding before feeding vegetables and fruit into the machine. And now you don't have to do that. You just put it in, turn it on and walk away. So we're talking about the Nama J2 juicer is what I'm using. And um, people ask me about it all the time. You can get it a 10% off with my code juice lady, all one word juice lady at Nama or Nama well is the site. Great. Yeah. So should I make something yeah. for you? Let's get juicing. How, how long does juice last or how long does it last in your home? Do you believe you have to drink it right away or can you refrigerate it for a oh. little bit? You can refrigerate it and absolutely it doesn't lose all its nutrients. You know, people used to say that was like the old um, mantra, uh, uh, drink it immediately. It's going to lose everything. But no, that's not true. And that's not how nature works unless you heat it or do something drastic to it. But if you store it in the fridge covered, um, so I like to use mason jars and fill it all the way to the top so you don't get that oxygen in there with a slow, um, they call it a slow process or masticating juicer, which this is, it'll last two days, um, maybe a little longer, but you can also freeze juice. And I have lots of people that I work with that have to do that. You know, a lot of people are very busy running out the door in the morning, uh, off to work, taking their kids somewhere. It's, it's hectic in their household and they don't have time to juice every morning. Uh, and so they big batch juice on the weekends and often get their family involved. And then you get little jars and freeze it. I did not realize you could freeze juice. Yeah. Just don't fill it all the way to the top. You know that, but not everyone does. You don't want it to explode on you. So leave about an inch and freeze it and pull the jars out then as you go. So I've had numerous people tell me their scenarios of how they do this. Like one um, police officer would pull out her juices in the morning, put them in her squad car and then have a couple of juices. Uh, I thought that was brilliant. That's very cool. Yeah. I love it. Better than having donut and coffee that we oh. associate police officers <laughs> diet with. I know. So I was so glad to hear her say that. As we talk, I'm going to start loading up this juicer with um, 
with some carrots. And I want to talk, I usually love to talk about everything I put in a juicer because I have a master's in nutrition. So I love to talk about why do we choose all these beautiful different vegetables and fruit and herbs and so forth, because they, they do so many things for us. But one of the things carrot does is to offer a lot of beta carotene or a lot of carotenoids. What am I doing? This is going on here. Um, so I'm just going to juice as I talk. This is fairly quiet. So can you hear me okay? Yeah, it really is quiet. I mean, Zoom is not muting you, you if that I can hear you, but that is amazing how quiet it is. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing that um, my husband used to always say when uh, we have one great big room and he would always say check that juicer off you can't hear what's on tv now he never says that <laughs> so true. i'm juicing i want to show you the carrot uh, juice is going to come pouring up here and uh, while i do that i'm going to get started on the second half of this recipe which this is icy spicy gazpacho. And I'm putting in um, a big handful of cilantro. And I love using cilantro because it's known to be a heavy metal detoxer, um, particularly mercury and aluminum. And so many people are telling me today that they've had a test. Lots of people are getting tested and they're coming out with heavy metals in their system. And I'm really, really worried about that. So what do you do? And not everybody can do expensive chelation. They uh, don't have the money. So uh, you can start juicing and blending up uh, a lot of cilantro. So I chose um, quite a good size. That was half a bunch of cilantro. And that's quite a bit to have in there. And then what makes this icy and uh, uh, the icy part is frozen tomato. And lots of people too are saying, what do I do with all of those extra tomatoes? Because it's garden season and um, lots of tomatoes. And people are saying, what, do, what can I do with it? So I love this um, particular recipe because it's so refreshing. So I'm going to pour in my carrot juice that I just made and I put in a lemon and it was a peeled lemon. And the reason I peel it is because you, it's hard to find organic lemons. If you do, they're rather expensive. People are telling me that too. I just can't afford it, organic lemons, so peel them. They're way down on the list. They're nowhere near the dirty dozen top 12 of the worst offenders of sprayed food, uh, produce. And so, I'm going to pour in now about a cup, as I said, of carrot juice. And what makes about a cup is uh, five or six large carrots. Wow. Make about a cup of juice, maybe a little more, maybe slightly less. Now I'm going to put in, this is the spicy part, just a slight little dash of cayenne pepper. And here we go. Now this is not going to be quiet. So I won't talk as I blend because this is what the Vitamix and they aren't known for their quiet work. No. But they are fast. That's one of the things that I love about the Vitamix. So here we go. And I wish I could pass this to you because it really is so delicious. Everybody that I make this recipe for goes, oh, oh, yum. Oh, wow. It's so good. It is really, really tasty. It's so refreshing. And you know, oh, I'm going to put just a little garnish on top, a little piece of cilantro. But a lot of times people want something kind of icy, especially when it's hot. And, um, and yet they want something healthy. And what do you do? That, uh, if you don't want the sugar, if you don't want a popsicle, which you can make your own with fresh juice, but this, I'll tell you, this is amazing. And I served it at dinner, dinner parties in little wine glasses. And people always go, what's this? And then they sip it and go, oh, wow. And I've served it to people who are not into being healthy or juicing or anything. And everybody loves it. So just remember, icy, spicy, <laughs> gazpacho 
I love it. I had no idea you could freeze tomatoes. I mean, I never thought about it. I've never seen frozen tomatoes. So I chop them up. I, uh, and I just took one tomato for this recipe and I chopped it up and, um, you can put it in little glass bowls. If you don't have much room, you can put it in a baggie and stuff it in the corner. And so I did two tomatoes because I had one that I thought it's not going to make it too many more days. Right. So I'm going to freeze this. And I usually have a couple of little bowls or baggies of frozen tomatoes. And then it's ready to go when I'm ready to make something really fun. And it's a great cocktail before dinner. Oftentimes my husband and I have one of those. Oh, and I have one chunk left that fell out. So here it is. I chop them up about this size. And so they're not real big. And then they blend up so easily and fast. Now I'm going to rinse this out because I'm next going to do for you my energy soup which again, this is so delicious, but I, I don't have two Vitamix. So I thought to just quickly rinse this out. Thank God for the sink right behind. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I always think I should get two canisters. So what do you do with the leftover pulp from the carrot juice? Is there a lot of it? And what do you do with it? Look at this. Yes. Oh, and I want to show you, it's so dry. Like, how how good is that? Well, I am so glad you didn't know I was gonna do this. No. I'm making for you carrot cookies <gasps> at the end. Nice well, carrot cookies. Excellent. Yeah. And um, so these are fun because they're no bake, and I love no bake stuff, especially when it's hot. Yeah, like, especially when it's hot. over a hundred. Sure. I know. Who wants your oven on, right? So um, I'm doing carrot cookies, but people ask me that all the time. Like, what do you do with that carrot pulp or all that pulp? It isn't just carrot pulp, right? Um, so you can make muffins. Uh, I do dehydrated crackers and I have an Italian buckwheat dehydrated cracker that I think is over the top delicious. And we serve that. I do raw food and juice retreats a couple of times a year. We have one coming up in September, but I um, do pizzas, little raw pizzas, I call them. And so it has the dehydrated crust, the Italian buckwheat crust. And then I put on um, a, 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 a pesto with no cheese. So it's vegan pesto and uh, some cashew cheese on top of that and then decorate it with like Kalamata olives or herbs, or, you know, you can get really creative. Red bell peppers sliced up or chopped up look pretty on there too. So anyway, you can do that. Um, what else? I put uh, some pulp in soups and stews and um, you can make cookies uh, also. And fruit pulp goes well in pancakes. Wow, that's great. You know, um, when I, I've, I don't have a juicer right now that I'm juicing with, but when I've done like homemade almond milk and we have leftover almond pulp, we make things with it at Rancho La Puerta, like cookies or crackers. And we don't, we don't throw it out. Oh, Rancho La Puerta. I love, I haven't been there in years. You've been oh, there? When was, oh my gosh, it's fabulous. I teach there about two to four times a year. When was the last time you were there? Oh my God. I'm trying to remember. It's been a decade and a half, I think. <clears throat> and I did teach there. I don't know. We kind of lost track of each other. But I've taught juicing and smoothies and kind of the stuff that I'm doing today. That's, oh, that's amazing. Well, they, they serve juice, you know, fresh pressed juice. And they do smoothies for, for you right at the pool every single day. Oh, they've added that because when I was there, they didn't. Um, oh, they, didn't they definitely that. do that now. That's so cool that you know about the place. Yes, I'll have to get in contact. I'm glad you said that because I love Rancho La Porta. It's just a magical place, beautiful and um, very peaceful. Great place to relax and, and uh, detox, right? So here we go. Here's for our raw soup. So I call this energy soup. And uh, carrot juice again, I'm on a carrot juice thing, I guess, today, but I'm going to put in about a cup of carrot juice into the Vitamix. And um, like a, uh, this isn't a small avocado, but um, I would say it's kind of a medium size avocado. And then to this, I'm adding about a half teaspoon of cumin, ground cumin. And I'm going to blend this up. 
and we are going to have beautiful energy soup. And again, this is not going to be quiet, <laughs> so I won't talk as I planned, but it's fast. <laughs> Okay, that's, again, the fast and wonderful Vitamix. You don't have to have a Vitamix, though, to do these recipes. Of course, you can do them in a blender, the good old garden variety blender, right? Okay, so we're going to pour, pour this in a bowl. I don't know if you can see, it's kind of thick, and I like it that way. Um, if you want it a little thinner, you can put more um, pear juice, less avocado, and then I toasted this morning some pumpkin seeds, and I'm just going to put a few on top, and there we go. Here's your fast lunch. Do you want lunch in like five minutes, and an energizing lunch, and a refreshing lunch? Here we go. This is your energy soup. And look how easy and how fast that is. And you know, you, if you don't like pumpkin seeds and people don't like that, you can put sunflower seeds or anything or forget the garnish, just make the soup, right? That's great. And people need quick and easy recipes, especially when it's hot. Oh, for sure. Well, I'm gonna move on and do an anti-inflammatory cocktail. And I chose this because I have been getting so many requests lately for inflammation. What do I do about inflammation? And you you may hear that as well. Um, it seems like inflammatory issues are on the rise. So yeah. I just want to talk about that for a moment. Anything with itis in it, like gastritis, arthritis, diverticulitis, myocarditis, and so forth, itis means inflammation. But if you have something like di diabetes or cancer with no itis in it, there's still inflammation. Any condition that you have, there is inflammation. And so what we want to do is bring that inflammation down. And so I have chosen a number of vegetables and uh, some herbs um, that are known to be anti-inflammatory. So we're gonna go back to the juice. I take the lid off just so I don't chance knocking it off. <laughs> it is noisy when it falls. Um, and I'm going to put, first of all, some cucumber. And oh, by the way, all of these vegetables are organic. And I'm gonna put these in the bottom. And I wanna talk about cucumber for a moment. It's known to have properties in it that are analgesic, meaning pain relievers, right? So it helps, um, with pain and it helps prevent the synthesis of prostaglandins. Those are those inflammatory substances in our body that contribute to pain, to inflammation. So it helps to quell that. I'm going to put in some fennel. I love working with fennel um, for a whole bunch of reasons, but fennel for, um, for today and today's recipe, fennel is an anti-inflammatory. So it's known to fight inflammation. So I put in the entire fennel part. You use the fronds too. You use the fronds? Yeah, I do. And yeah, I put pretty... those in there already. Here's a stem. <laughs> hey, Sherry, you mentioned organic. Are you familiar with that new thing called APEEL, a peel? It's some kind of coating they're putting on fruits and vegetables. I am, and it scares me. Are they putting it on organic too, or just conventional? Because I've had doctors on the show, like Dr. Ron Weiss, who's also a regenerative farmer, saying he's not very happy with this. No. And everybody that I respect in the industry and everything I've read about it, no one's happy with this. And as it stands now, it looks like they're going to spray it on everything, including organic. And I hope what arises is a group to fight this because I will certainly sign my name and do everything I can to help fight to keep it at least off organic. Um, I can't tell you everything that's in it. I read about it and it was more confusing than clear to me what's all in it, but it did not sound good. And nobody that I've talked to that I respect or heard lectures on it, I think it's a good thing. So right now, um, 
as far as I know, it's not mainstream. And this was just hearsay. Somebody um, told me one of the main stores, it might have been Target or Walmart, I don't know, is um, presenting and selling produce with a peel on it. They should have a label on everything. Everything's supposed to have a code, right? So you know if it's organic or non-organic or whatever. It should have a code, and I don't know what its code is, and I pray that they code it, you know, so we'll know what to do. You know, and we we don't have a say in this. That's the thing, unless we want to just grow our own stuff. You know what I mean? I do. And it's hard. And especially here in Arizona, it's so hot stuff dies in the summer. It's very, very, very difficult to grow things. And so a lot of people are in that boat that they don't have the, the space to grow things. So it's very new. It's in its infant stage. And I just pray that a whole army of us will arise and make people so aware, thank you for bringing that up, that they won't make the headway they think they're going to make, right? They think they're going to make some headway on this. Oh, boy. Yeah. If it isn't one thing, it's another, right? Mm -hmm. We work so hard. Don't GMOs. We? It's like, the thing is, is we never get to say we don't get to vote. I mean, I guess we vote with our dollar, but, you know, we don't really have a say whether or not they do these things to begin with. I know which is extremely frustrating. And if if it means there are no vegetables to buy, how then do we vote with our dollar? That's what I've been thinking. Where do we go to find unsprayed vegetables and fruit? So we shall see. Um, my Pilates instructor the other day was telling me she found an app and I've got to check this out that had a list of the stores that were going to sell it. So maybe your some of your audience will find that. But yeah, it's time, boy, to speak out. It seems like there's so much we have to speak out on these days. It gets exhausting, doesn't it? So many things coming down the pipe. Well, meantime, these are unsprayed, <laughs> appeal, unsprayed <laughs> vegetables. And I wanted to talk about what do you do with these broccoli stems, right? Because I used to throw these away because they're so hard. I mean, what the heck are you going to do with them? Juice them. There we go. And I'm putting some in the juicer. We're going to juice up broccoli stems. How about a broccoli leaf? I used to always throw those away. I'm going to put that in the juicer. Broccoli is an anti-carcinogenic vegetable. And it also prevents gastric mucosal damage. So if you're wanting to protect your gut lining, broccoli is a wonderful vegetable to include and you can juice it. So I'm gonna uh, put in a florette as well. Um, I'm putting in some ginger and I love ginger root. I put it in most of my juices, um, which I make almost every day, as I said. Ginger has been shown to be anti-inflammatory, rich in zinc, which is wonderful for the immune system. Um, Anti-nausea, uh, anyone who's nauseous, get some ginger, juice it up or grate it up or chop it up and make tea, but it's anti-nausea. So it, a lot of pregnant women have used ginger in all sorts of things. And next I'm putting in some fresh turmeric root. I love turmeric. It does have a bright stain and um, I have to run the top of my juicer through the dishwasher to get that bright yellow out. But there are over 6,000 studies on turmeric root and all the amazing things it does for the body. It is shown to be anti-inflammatory, proven in many, many, many studies. Also, um, cancer fighter, it's the curcumin in here that gives it the bright yellow that fights cancer. Um, it's an immune builder, wonderful immune builder. So I buy bags of organic turmeric every time I see them at my store. And they just so happened to have a bag the last time I was in there. So I could include it for you. I'm going to add some apple to this. And I'm about to the top of my juicer, but I'm going to put some apple in for a little flavor. And I wanted to talk for a moment about apple. Um, Green apple is lower in sugar 
Some, uh, some of you have to keep your sugar lower than others do. And uh, if you're one that does, I'm certainly one. I usually don't even add apple, I add lemon. Lemon to me is just amazing. It gives so much flavor. It gives you vitamin C and bioflavonoids, and it's great to add um, to your all your juices. But if you have some lemon and some apple, it's kind of a lemonade base, you know? And so it's a very nice flavor. I'm also going to add just a little bit of carrot that adds a little sweetness. Um, apple helps to fight allergies. I don't know if um, anybody's heard that before, but uh, it also is rich in quercetin. And quercetin is a phytonutrient that um, fights inflammation. So I'm gonna turn the juicer on and uh, let's see what we come up with here. So that, again, like I said, is the beauty of having banana, because now if you had other things that you wanted to do in your kitchen, you could walk away or clean your counter or prep or something else that you want to make, maybe for your meal. But it's going to do the work for you. And also, I love the fact that you can stop the spout and open it anytime you want to close it back up. And I used to always drip juice from my counter to my sink, right? Because I'm trying to get the thing over there. But if you close up your spout, you won't drip juice around your kitchen. As you know. Another thing, and people ask me this all the time, um, how easy is this to clean? And it is very easy. And we can always tell people think about the cleanup because that's where things kind of break down for people. If you don't have a juicer that's fast and easy to clean, that may have every bell and whistle and you we were so excited when you bought it that you probably will continue to use it. And so your health will benefit that way. So always I, uh, I say it's very important to have one that's easy, not only easy to use, but easy to clean. And uh, this one is I can clean it in about a minute. I usually just rinse the parts off and then every few days I run the upper parts through my dishwasher and like, brighten everything up. I juice a lot of bright colored vegetables and the um, tumor clears <laughs> everything up for sure. Carrie, so, is there is there anything, any fruit or vegetable or anything you shouldn't juice? Like, I don't know, maybe a potato, for example? Potatoes don't juice well. There are people who swear by potato juice remedies, right? They're kind of gritty. Uh, same, well, all potatoes are kind of gritty. Sweet potatoes and yams as well are kind of gritty. So I always, um, if I'm going to do a yam or a sweet potato, I will juice and pour the juice in a glass bowl like this and let it set for maybe half hour, 45 minutes. Sometimes it takes a little longer and you'll see that white starch come to the bottom. So you'll have two layer um, uh, juice and then you can pour the juice off the top and get rid of that starchy thick it's kind of hard actually layer that collects on the bottom and that's the same way with potato juice i do not like that gritty texture and most people really don't and so that's how i have to do it with a um, potato but not everybody tells you that <laughs> it has potato in the recipe for their juice there are some people who swear by potato juice being a remedy I don't know. I haven't found that yet. Have you ever heard of potato milk? Because I've heard of people buying and making potato milk. I haven't heard of potato milk, but I would think that if you're, do they say, are they just blending it raw potato? Because you'd need the starch, I would think, to make it milky, right? I'm going to find out. Well, let's see. Here's a potato milk recipe if I just Googled it. So let's see how they're doing it. I'm going to tell you, and I, I mean, uh, they're, looks like they're blending it and oh, maybe they're cooking the potato first and then straining it through, through cheesecloth. It's an interesting concept. How long have you been juicing and when did you get interested in it and why? Oh, I started a long time ago in my twenties. I was really sick. I had chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, and it was so bad. I had to quit work 
and sleep a good portion of my day, 12 hours usually at least, and wake up sick and tired and dragging and feeling like I had the flu all the time and aching all over and no one could help me. And doctors really still don't know what to do about those conditions. Um, they uh, talk about managing them with uh, drugs. And I thought there's got to be a better way out of this. I mean, this is a no way out, right? Um, so I uh, quit going to doctors because they had no um, answers. And I went to a couple of health food stores and people talked to me about what I was eating and it was terrible. I loved then I shudder to say this fast food and junk food and I did not like vegetables. And I ate very, very poorly. And uh, I learned about juicing. So I bought my first juicer and went on a five day juice fast. On the fifth day, my body expelled a tumor the size of a golf ball and it had some blue blood vessels attached that looked like they'd been cut. Um, that got my attention like nothing in my life ever had. And I thought, wow, this was amazing. I since uh, have learned what that, those blue blood vessels were. It's known as angiogenesis and the body will grow, you know, blood vessels to feed the tumor. They'll grow out to the tumor. What is um, anti-angiogenesis are different phytonutrients in our vegetables in particular, some fruit uh, and a lot of the vegetables. So I saw that work in action in my own body. But um, I thought the next day I was gonna wake up totally well. I mean, you know, here I got rid of this thing, right? And life is great and I did my cure and I'm, I'm off and running and that was not true. And so I, um, I decided that I better hang in there and, and follow this program and I added in uh, mostly vegetables in many forms and some few uh, ancient grains. And I was totally vegan, a lot raw, um, and a lot of vegetables and a lot of juice. It took me three months to heal. But one day I woke up and was well. And I thought, that was the best cure on the face of the earth. But again, uh, I was on a wrong track. I called it a cure. And I, like most people think cure is something you do, you get well and you go on with your life, right? But I couldn't go on with my old life. I tried to, and I started going out with friends for things that were unhealthy, pizzas, things like that. And my symptoms started coming back. And that's when I knew this has got to be a way of life. Yeah. I have to live like this. So being young and wanting to go the other way, it was a struggle. It was, you know, two steps up and a step back and a step forward. And I finally had to come to the realization that having wonderful health and feeling great every day is far better than five minutes or 10 minutes, or I don't know what it takes to go out and eat 30 for of uh, junk, 30, 40, maybe an hour of pleasure. And then it's all over and you're paying and it's no longer pleasure for me then I'm starting to feel sick again. And so um, I've been a proponent of juicing ever since. I got my master's degree in 92 and I've been teaching and writing books about this ever since. And I'm so passionate because juicing and changing my diet gave me a life that I didn't have. And my mother died of cancer when I was six years old and I am totally convinced I was following in her footsteps and um, I would have been in the same boat. I probably wouldn't be here now. So, well, um, congratulations. Did anyone else follow your healthy eating ideas? Any of your family members? No, <laughs> sadly, none of my family members did. Uh, but my husband does, and he loves all of my juices. And I now have a whole community of friends that um, love the juices as well and love eating healthy. And I have uh, a lot of people that follow me on Instagram. I do reels, juice reels all the time. So there is um, a large community out there that is very interested in people. See, it seems like continually are coming on board and wanting to know more about how to get healthy or how to stay healthy. And uh, I think, ju I don't think I know, juicing's here to stay. It's had its um, bumpy roads, 
through the years, it's ups and downs, but it's here to stay. And more and more people are discovering its benefits. That's great. What well, do you say to people who say, well, but it's so expensive and you could just eat that produce instead. You, you wouldn't be using quite as much. <clears throat> wow. I just got a sip of strong ginger. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Took a sip of that. That was potent ginger. I always say, you know, um, I used to do big seminars and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to have another sip. That was strong ginger. Yeah, ginger is potent. <clears throat> wow. I usually do big chunks, but this one was really, really strong. So <clears throat> I'm, I am going to get past this. Hmm. Okay. So um, people have asked me that for years. Can I just eat that produce? And I say, you could, but <clears throat> excuse me, you probably won't. You probably would never take a bowl like I had and eat all of that, but you would juice it. And um, secondly, it's broken down so well, it gets right into your system, right into your body. And when you eat it, it's taking a couple of hours to break down in your body. And um, it's not getting right in to your cells. So I remember um, an interview I did with Dr. Mercola and he said the same thing. Um, he noticed with his patients that juicing did um, incredible things that nothing else would do. And I, that is what I've observed in working with people as a nutritionist. There's many, many people who say, wow, when I started juicing, nothing made the difference like the juice. You know, just eating the vegetables, eating the salads, eating the steamed vegetables, nothing made uh, a difference for them like the fresh juice. So they were able to overcome pain. Um, so many people have said mental fog has lifted, energy has improved, people have slept better. I just all the way around, it's been an amazing thing. But the last thing I wanted to say about this, because uh, again, that's probably the first question I get every time I speak on juicing. Can I just go eat this? So I thought, okay, one day I'm going to try this. How long will it take me to eat a bowl? I had five carrots in there. And um, I think I had a piece of ginger root. Thank God I didn't try that. I got... I had some lemon and some greens and I got through the five carrots. It took me almost an hour to chew them all up. And my jaw was so sore and tired. I gave up and didn't even tackle anything else in my bowl. And there is my um, end of the story. You know, how many of us have hours to chew and chew and chew, right? All of this beautiful produce, we don't. And people are proving that by saying, you know, I'm on the run, I'm eating on the run, and I just don't have time. I, they don't even have time to make a little salad a lot of times, but you can juice it. You can take that beautiful bowl of produce and juice it up, freeze it, store it, take it in a thermos, whatever you wanna do, but you can get that, all those beautiful vegetables day in and day out, you can get them into your system. Yeah, that's great. What, but it's not it's not a replacement for eating healthy when you're not juicing. That that's a point that you've made. Oh, you can't just no, juice no. and eat McDonald's. It doesn't work that way. How many times I've been asked that? And I go, no, <laughs> you can't. No, we have to eat healthy and juice, and yeah. then you're going to notice amazing benefits. Did you ever have the Jack Lane juicer? That was one of the first juicers I had. He was great. I, I interviewed his wife a couple of times. Oh, excellent. Yeah, I I did some work with him um, in the latter years when um, uh, he was doing some presentations and I showed up to help. Yeah, I used that juicer. Um, it was uh, a decent, I would say, centrifugal juicer, kind of middle of the road uh, type of juicer. But he sure made juicing popular. 
And because of Jack, my hat is off to him. Lots of people got interested in juicing when he was doing the infomercials for so many years. Yeah, absolutely. That's very cool. What are some other juicers? I know that the everybody says the Nama J2 is the best, but are there other ones that people might want to consider if they couldn't afford that one or? Yes, and I get asked that a lot too. So um, I point people to Hamilton Beach. It's, if you're saying I've got to stay under a hundred dollars and right now I know it's tough for people that there are some people that are really struggling are in our economy right now. Um, uh, then I recommend the Hamilton Beach because um, you can get it online. The price kind of fluctuates a bit, but you can find it under a hundred. Um, almost, well, I've never seen it over a hundred and it's decent. Um, it'll get the job done for you and get you started. That's great. Nice. I no, can't wait to see the cookie. Line. I didn't know we were going to get a cookie recipe today. I'm going to make cookies for you now. So I did um, some in advance work and put in, I'm going to tell you what I've got in here already that I um, worked on and made kind of a flour type consistency. So I started with a cup of oats. These are organic oats. Everything I buy is organic. And then I have a half cup of sunflower seeds in here. And I've got a half cup of shredded coconut and it is organic coconut. And um, so I just processed that until it looks kind of like flour. It's not, it's not as fine a consistency, but it's perfect for cookies. So now I'm going to put in about a half cup of raisins and I'm just going to pulse it a little bit just to mix it up a little bit, to chop up those raisins a little bit. So there we go, that's pretty good. And then I'm going to put in half a cup of carrot pulp. So um, here's a little tip. As you're making your juices, pull out your carrot pulp, like juice your carrots first, whatever you're making, juice your carrots first. Pull out your carrot pulp and set it aside um, for your cookies. And then uh, you can use any natural good sweetener that you want. You could do a teaspoon of pure maple syrup. I love stevia. I'm I'm stuck on stevia. I know a lot of people love monk fruit too, and that's another good one. I'm using sweet leaf vanilla cream. So here it is. And I've got, I put about a quarter of a teaspoon of uh, stevia in with my teaspoon of vanilla. So I'm going to pour that in here. And then we're going to put in spices. And I've got it, I put them all together. I've got about a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half teaspoon, I got to look at my notes here, of nutmeg, that's right, and a quarter teaspoon of clove. So we're going to dump those in and turn it. <laughs> and you may need to add some water. You want to look at the consistency. I've got a quarter cup water here. And I'm going to see what it looks like. Oh, yeah, I want to add a little bit more water. So you want it to be just a little thicker than batter. <laughs> And it's looking pretty good. And I'll add just a smidge more water. I'm using purified water. Okay. And we are at cookie stage. So the next step is to take out about a teaspoon of your batter and roll it in shredded coconut flakes and I did get unsweetened coconut flakes so could you I'm use, saying, uh, Sherry excuse me could you use dried fruit instead of the stevia if somebody wanted to use like raisins or dates or figs or something like that absolutely 
Great. And I know there are people who love um, to use like dates. Now we do have, you know, some raisins in here, but I want to show you what I'm doing so you can see. I took this little carrot ball and rolled it in some coconut. And now we've got this, I'm gonna put it on its little plate by itself. We've got this cute little carrot, carrot balls, I call them. Oh, hold Some them up carrots. a little bit, I, the, yeah, I couldn't see. Hold them up again and say it. Here we go. I gotta get it close to the camera. There you go. And yep. they, are, they are cute and, and they're great. And you can chill them too. And I think that makes them extra good when they're cold, but they don't have to be. Um, another thing you could do if you wanted is to put um, some chopped nuts, nuts in there as well um, after you're done pulsing or spinning, <laughs> whatever, processing, you could add a few chopped nuts in. If you, some people just love, you know, nuts. They like the crunch in there, but this is your carrot cookie. And I'll make another one and roll it around. So you roll it again in just your coconut flakes. I have unsweetened coconut flakes. And there we go. So Love, you know, when you buy those at the store, they're like $6. So it's so much easier and cheaper to make your own little balls. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, Definitely make your own. And this answers one of those big questions. What do I do with all that pulp? You know what else would be good in here if you had some fruit pulp? You know, like maybe you had carrot apple. You were making a glass of carrot apple. Um, that would be delicious too. That's great. Well, this is fun. I mean, if, if you're making the food, why wouldn't your family want to eat it with you? Oh, absolutely. You know, um, a lot of times um, women will say to me, oh, my family, they don't want any, any of this stuff that I eat, but then they'll serve something that looks beautiful and it tastes great. And suddenly everybody likes it. So just give it a try, especially little treats like this. Well, everybody's probably heard about the almond butter balls. You know, they're similar to this. You could actually add some carrot pulp in with that recipe as well. Those are simple. You can find them online. Everybody's got a version of almond butter balls, but um, people love those too. And you can certainly, if you've got family members that have really got a sweet tooth, of course, you can add extra sweetener, whatever you're thinking. And there's still nutrition left in the pulp? Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Yes, a little bit, not a lot. Um, <clears throat> people think that a lot of their nutrients are stuck in the pulp. And here's some grain pulp. I'll show you how dry that is. But in 1996, the U.S. Department of Agriculture did a study on, the, on pulp of 12 different fruits. <clears throat> Found that 90, a little more than 95% of the nutrients were in the juice and not the pulp. So it isn't a large amount of nutrient in there, but there is the insoluble fiber and it, uh, it adds a lot of good consistency to whatever you're making. <clears throat> I love it in dehydrated crackers. It just really adds beautiful consistency, I think, to the crackers. So um, definitely save it. I know there are people who really, really, it bothers them a lot to throw pulp away. And people who freeze it, people who compost with it, um, whatever you want to do. There's all sorts of fun things you can do with pulp after you've juiced. This green pulp that I've got right here would be great in soup. I made a potassium broth soup that I got in the fridge the other day uh, of cucumber, no, not cucumber, um, zucchini, celery, and green beans. And I was just thinking I could add this green pulp to that and it would be good. What's your favorite combination uh, to juice? Oh, it's probably what I do almost every day. I start with a base of either zucchini or cucumber. Um, and I love to do one of those two because they give you a lot of juice. Zucchini surprisingly gives a lot of juice. I had no idea of it. <clears throat> One day I, I was out of cucumbers and somebody had given me a zucchini 
And I thought, I'm just going to try juicing this up and see what happens. And all this juice comes pouring out. And I went, oh, wow, this is wonderful. So to that, to uh, that start, I add carrot, um, always ginger, often turmeric when I can find fresh, a uh, lemon, and I always peel, as I said, the lemon, I get most of the peel off of it, but I leave a lot of that white pithy part because that's where the bioflavonoids are and the vitamin C are concentrated there. And then I add to that any greens that I have. Um, if I've got some leftover broccoli stem, like I just uh, steamed some broccoli the other day and I have these stems left over, I'll put in some stems or asparagus stems. And so it just depends on what's hanging around. But my base always is either zucchini or cucumber, carrot and lemon and ginger. And then to that, I add greens, whatever is on hand at the time. Well, great. Well, your skin looks beautiful. I'm sure that's one of the side effects. Thank you. Oh, there's a study. I'm so glad you said something about skin. And thank you, by the way, there is a study from the UK that um, they did with university students comparing people with a tan to people who ate, um, I, I believe it was five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables a day. They were They were large consumers of produce. And they compared and they had the students vote on wh whose skin they thought was more attractive, the suntan people or um, the produce, high produce intake people. And it was the high produce intake people that got the vote for the prettiest skin. And, you know, we've kind of set the suntanned people up to look the healthiest. And, and uh, it was the vegetable people. Interesting. Well, I think they're amazing vegetables and fruits. Now you mentioned something about teaching classes. Is this something you do in person, online, both? Um, I do in person at our retreats. We have um, the Juice and Raw Foods retreats twice a year. And um, I teach the classes, of course, all the nutrition classes. And my husband does the spirit and soul. He's a psychotherapist and heart math provider and priest. And so he teaches those. Um, and then I teach locally and internationally and nationally, wherever. Um, but I do online stuff too. Yes. And come follow me. Anybody that's a one. Yeah, just make sure everything that you tell me, I'll make put it in the show notes and people can click it and follow you on social media or your website. Where where are these two annual in-person retreats? Where do they take place? Yeah, here in Arizona in beautiful Carefree. Carefree is known for the, its big boulders and beautiful terrain and more hills and it's cooler up there. The elevation is a bit, not huge, but a bit higher. And it's always um, at, at least five, maybe 10 degrees cooler. Um, it, it's a charming area. The retreat center is just beautiful. They have a gorgeous pool and jacuzzi and waterfalls and the rooms are large and lovely. And we have a great raw food chef who does fabulous creations. It's gourmet. It's not just, you know, a bunch of sprouts and <laughs> salad greens. So, and then we do uh, two days of juice fasting together, which um, people love that because there are people who tell me, I've never juiced fast in my life because it's too hard all alone. But when, when we're together, they can do it. So um, I hope you'll come join me, anybody that's listening. And um, we will have a great time eating raw foods and juicing and learning together. Oh, great. Well, thank you so much. This was a lot of fun, Sherry. It was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for inviting me on your show. Absolutely. Absolutely. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow for another fabulous guest. Take care, everyone.